Okay. Um, all right. So we just took a look at, or is it Lee code a thou thousand? And we, um, that was another hard problem. And I tried to explain that to my best of my ability in about 30 plus minutes. Um, here, I'm going to try to explain 741. Go check out a thousand if you're interested in that. So a friend online had sent me this problem. He said, this is one of my favorite problems. Will, why don't you take a look? And I thought to myself, fine, sure. The problem with that, though, is uh, <laughs> I found this extremely challenging, this question. Um, the problem with that, though, and uh, just doing like a sound check here. And yeah, I found it extremely challenging, and I got stuck on it for days. <laughs> Um, but I solved it. I, you know, I sort of put my, my mind to the, the task and I said, I'm not going to walk away from this problem until I solve it, which I've done in the past. And usually I'll be successful if I do that, but I often get quite stuck on particularly difficult, challenging problems. Um, excuse me. I, oh, actually there's another problem now that I'm thinking about that I think I had walked away from as well in the past. I think it was also a leak code hard. And I actually, now I'm thinking about it and uh, I probably need to do another dynamic, I probably need to do a dynamic programming approach to solve that problem too. I got really stuck on that one. I got 100% stuck on that. I think, I don't know if that was a hacker, I think it was a hackering problem rather than a leak code problem. But yeah. So actually now that now that I've, I've uh, thought about this problem a bit, um, I think I have a solution to that other problem now, or at least I, could, I have the I have the right idea now to approach that one. Um, so to solve problems like this that are rather difficult, and by the way, I also um, I also this is sort of by demand. This uh, no, not the, is it, wait, wait, uh, somewhat by demand. No, not solution. Um, it's actually the solution. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. All right. So hold on. Hold on. Um, I'm not going to apply to Uber. <laughs> this is apparently a question to Uber. Um, I read this three to four times, but hold on, hold on. So this is March 2019, right? So this is like a month ago, a few weeks, six weeks ago. I read the solution three to four times, but not able to get it. Is there any video made on this problem? Well, sir, here you go. <laughs> Here's the problem. Here's the video. <laughs> um, and just to, like, I guess, prove that I got it. Um, I'll execute it. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait a minute. It was working two days ago. What happened? No. No. <laughs> what? Hold on. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that's embarrassing. Really? Did I screw something up here? Oh no. Oh no. Whoops. What? Wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a second. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? <laughs> what happened? No, that's fine. 4 and 20 milliseconds. What do you mean time limit exceeded? I think it's a bug on the site. I hope not. What? What? Wait a minute. What? Huh? That doesn't say time limit exceeded. That says 396 milliseconds. Wait, what happened? What? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, this one. Uh oh. What do you mean? What do you mean? Time limit exceeded. What? <laughs> 56 of 56 test cases passed. Time limit exceeded. Hello? What is happening? Is it not? 
is it not a good anymore? No, come on. What is this? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try refreshing. I don't know what happened. I don't think that's right. Something's wrong. Something's wrong, man. It was fine. I swear. I promise. It was okay. I swear. I got it to work. You can see it. It was accepted two days ago. <laughs> they they increased the time limit. You can't do this the solution anymore. Oh no, man. Previous code restored from your local storage. Oh no. Pfft. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we found the solution. We have an explanation. Uh, I guess sometimes it's a little too slow. I don't know. In some cases it's slow. Sometimes it's fine. That's something else. I guess I just had to refresh the page. I don't know. Really strange, really bizarre. But anyway, we figured it out. So let's go to our test case. Let's go to this guy. And uh, oh, not this one. Oh, shoot. Um, hold on. Let me. Uh, was it this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. This is what we wanted. So if we run this, right, you can see 436 milliseconds. Uh, 192, 192. Okay, fine, fine. So why why do I want to make a video about this? All right, well, someone asked, and also um, I uh, I was stuck on this for like days, and I didn't understand. I didn't get it. I couldn't understand. And I did actually peruse the discussion, um, and I was gonna look at the solution, but I ended up I ended up looking just to see what the time bounds are. I think, but I didn't I didn't actually check the check what these solutions were, how to, how to implement them. So I did come up with this on my own. Um, but yeah, the discussions had said that there's ON cubed with ON squared. Um, what do they call that? ON cubed with ON squared. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, space. Memoize space. I'm not, I'm not going to go into that solution. I, didn't, I, don't, I couldn't figure out what that was. But I'll tell you what I figured out here. Um, and so pretty much I said, all right, uh, I don't know how to solve this. <laughs> this is too hard. <laughs> Same thing I did last time. This is like most problems of this nature. Um, the description of the problem, we'll, we'll, we'll go back. Uh, so an N by N grid representing, so yeah, let's just describe the problem first. Let's describe it first. So cherry pickup, 741. N by N grid representing a field of cherries. Each cell is one of three possible integers. Zero means the cell is empty, so you can pass through. One means the cell contains a cherry that you can pick up and pass through. Negative one means the cell contains a thorn that blocks your way. Task is to collect maximum number of cherries possible by following the following rule, following by the following the rules below. Starting in at zero zero in the top left corner and reaching the bottom right corner by moving right or down through valid path cells, cells with value zero one. After reaching n minus one minus one, returning to zero zero by moving left left or up through valid path cells. When passing through a path cell containing a cherry, you pick it up and the cell becomes empty. If there's no valid path between zero zero and n minus one minus one, then no cherries can be collected. So, like I said, I thought of, thought about this problem and thought about it and thought about it. I was stuck on it for days, and then I realized I can't solve it. So let me do exactly what I did with the merge stones problem and just say, all right, what's a solution? to this problem that has a kind of branching, let's say, going on, um, just a sort of recursive solution that I could think of that might solve this problem. Um, I also thought about it enough where I was able to even um, cherry pick up recap one. I, I also thought about it in such a way where I was able to um, think of, oh yeah, think of an analog that really simplifies the problem. But yeah, basically it came down to um, navigate through the search space in such a way where we can have um, redundant redundancies memoized. That was, that was effectively what it came down to, what, what you know, somehow memoize the function. Um, but yeah, so search the whole search base. And, and the thing to note here too is that, like, like I said, problems like this are kind of like lend themselves to that idea that you basically cannot do it without like searching the whole search space, but you may be able to optimize how you search it using memoization. Same idea I was describing in the other video. 
um, when you have an n by n grid, it's an n by n grid with, by, with 50. So n is bounded by 50. So it's re for dealing with um, programming problems like this, 50 is quite a small number. Um, so you can have something that's a cubic, quartic, quintic. You can pretty much have anything that's polynomial would probably work on 50. Um, I think my algorithm is like n to the fifth, ultimately. Um, but yeah, so let's get into the algorithm. So first things first, um, you've got these. So, so an interesting test case to think about uh, to really show this problem is like this. It looks like this. Something like this. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Just to give ourselves a little table. And we'll say, okay, so if you go, you have something that looks like this. Right? And you say, uh, I can do it probably better. So yeah, here is fine. So something like this is a great example. So the first thing to note is that... Um, this one's not going to have any thorns. So the first thing to note is that the basic idea that you can just maybe, you know, th this is sort of the, the first idea, is that you can just take um, what the, I think, Dijkstra's algorithm, I want to say, on squared at time algorithm in this case, um, and find the path. It's not really the shortest path. It's more like, it's like Dijkstra. It's not quite Dijkstra's, but basically um, you can do a simple, simple uh, depth for search algorithm. Um, that gives you the path that'll give you the the largest um, sum, sort of going from top to bottom, and then you can say, okay, let me try that again. After after I've I've picked up all those cherries, just do it a second time. The problem with that, though, take that approach is that you'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, when you should be getting eleven. Right? You should you should actually be getting eleven. And the reason is um, you could have gone this way. Whoops, not like that, sorry. You could have gone this way to get all the ones on, on the map. So um, the key here, right, so let's show that again. The key here is that this is hard. <laughs> this is a hard problem. And there's something to note here that's special. And you may have noticed that, that I, I'm going like so, two paths in the same direction rather than what they suggested, which was one path where you come back up. And that's actually the first observation I wanted to point out is that this is actually not um, two different paths, or rather one, it's not actually just one path um, as they described where you come back up. Because you're only going down and to the right, and then you're only going um, up and to the left, it's actually it's actually yeah it's one path, but you can also describe it as two separate paths down and to the right, um, because it's up and to the left reversed. So it's it's really you could think about it like two different paths, entirely two different paths. And if you do think about it that way, which is it took me a while to realize that, um, but if you do think about it that way. There are some things you can do with this problem that make it um, a little bit easier. It actually makes it, in my, in my opinion, made it solvable for me. So what you can consider is that okay, there, there, there is sort of the starting point, and you've got um, from the starting point, you've got uh, four possibilities. You can go to the right. You can go to the uh, with both both paths. You can go to the right with the first path and down on the second path. Um, let's do it this way. You can go to the right and down on the second path. So right and down. You can go 
down on the first path and right on the second path. Now you might be thinking, well, it leaves you in the same spot, but obviously, um, you know, there's some point in your paths. Let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, where obviously right and down and down and uh, down and down and right is not going to give you the same solution as right and down, right? So although in some cases it's the sa it's redundant, a lot of case, other cases it's not. You may start to realize also that um, there's two points you're managing now, not just one point, whereas the other recursive algorithm it might just be a single point you're looking at where you say, okay, just at each recursively just give me what's the maximum solution I can get at each of these points and then give me the maximum of those two and then that's going to be my new points value. It's actually a very straightforward algorithm to, to get, you know, sort of just the optimal maximal path, um, the maximum number of things from le top left to top right, maximum number of cherries in one shot. But two, two shot, two, two paths this gets a little more interesting. Like I said, two, two paths, you would, you would actually miss this one if you use that other algorithm. So how do we ensure we get every, every possibility? Well, you could say, okay, you go right, 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 down, down, right, and down, down, right? You can go, you know, four different possibilities. And you've got two, different, two points you're looking at, both starting here, right? And that's effectively what you do. It doesn't, it sounds kind of trivial and simple, but it is simple. I mean, that's sort of the whole point is that this, these problems are a lot easier than you realize. You just kind of got to think about it a bit, I guess. Um, and, and first admit that they're too hard. <laughs> they're too hard to do in a clever way, so do it a really simple way, and, and it should, should be, you should be fine. So what you end up doing is you say, at each step, um, you're going to consider these four different moves you make, right? And then what you're going to do is, after you make each of those moves, so each of those moves has a, has a resulting state that you're going to recurse on. So you recurse on all those different states. What those are, ultimately, are just points being moved. So really, you could have four points, like, you know, x1, y1, or, yeah, x, oh, actually, probably better, it should be y1, y1, x1, and y2, x2, or better yet, I like to do row 1, row 1, column 1, and row 2, column 2, right? Um, that, so you have, the, you have that state, and, you know, and when you increase to the right, you increase the column on both of these. You, when you go right down, you increase the column on one and the row on the other. Down right is reversed. And then down down, you just increase the row on both of these points. And so you recurse on all those cases, right? And you recurse on those four cases and you say, okay, give me the case. Uh, what I want to do is I want to say, give me um, the return value of, of that recursion is actually going to be um, a total list of of the so this is the part that gets kind of kind of kind of interesting it's kind of confusing um you're going to return a list and it's going to be each of those spots you're going to return a list and it's going to be all of the um ch let's say cherries that you pick up on that, on the, the, those two paths, so on each of those paths, so it's actually going to give you. Um, this is kind of interesting. This part, it's going to give you for both paths. There's going to be a maximum sort of number of cherries, right? It's going to be it's recursive, so it's going to be the maximum number of cherries, meaning that from the two positions that you just picked, there is a solution. Uh, and that's and that's sort of the maximum, the, the maximal solution you can get. What you're going to do then is you're going to say, okay, from the points that I just went to from there, if, if, if for each of those points, if they're not in that set, that maximal set, add them in there. But if they're already in there, don't add them again. This should avoid adding the um, values multiple times. That'll avoid adding the values multiple times. So notice, you don't backtrack at all, so it doesn't need to be that complicated how we avoid adding things back. But the problem here, is obviously, is that um, you've got to actually maintain a list for each of these return things, um, return statements. 
And that does make things a little more complicated. It actually adds linear overtime um, multiplicatively because you've got to actually, what I end up doing is that at each, um, for each recursive set that you return, I create a new set and I operate on that new set and I add these two into that, each of those new sets. Um, and I do that, uh, and I do that, um, Oh, yeah, for all of the sets, I do that. And then I take the largest set remaining afterwards. And so I take the largest set remaining, um, and then I return that set. And then what I ultimately want is the result at this point, the length of that set that's returned. And that's it, and you're done. And it's actually really simple in that sense. Um, and then you memoize the thing as well. Um, so you end up, you know, instead of doing exponential time algorithm, it ends up being, um, so it would otherwise be something like four, four raised to the 2n, O of four raised to the 2n, I think it ends up being O of n to the fifth, or maybe O of four raised to the 2n times n or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, it just ends up being O of n to the fifth, I believe. I believe. Which is, as you saw, it sort of, I guess, just fast enough. <laughs> for the solution. Um, and to walk through the code to see what I did. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And and also, by the way, you, you need to have, you know, bounds checks, obviously. So you've got to have a way to signify that, you know, you've gone out of bounds um, and to kill the recursion right then and there. You also need a way to check when you reach thorns to also kill the recursion around the thorns, right? Um and finally, you also need to take care of cases where you cannot reach the bottom right, um, which is possible, right? So this is a case where you simply cannot reach the bottom right, um, and you've got to make sure you return the correct, you have to return, a, I think, a zero for that one. So you've got to return the correct value for that as well. So there's a few edge, edge, th edge cases to consider, but that's pretty much, oh, and there is, and there's yet one more thing to consider. It's kind of sneaky, kind of hard, tricky when you program this. Um, it's possible. To, so you must, oh, both paths must reach the bottom right. That's a requirement of the problem. You could have a better path of picking up cherries that does not reach the bottom. And I actually had a test case where that was the case. Um, and I was quite quite frustrated because I couldn't figure out, I had to like by hand, I had to figure out why do I not, why am I getting it wrong? I'm getting, the, I'm getting a larger number, but I'm not reaching the bottom. And that's again, it's part of part of the description of the problem. Is that you've got to actually get all the way down to the bottom. Um, so, a pretty interesting question overall. Um, I wonder if I wonder if there's a better way to do this as well. Um, I'm thinking about like. I wonder. I wonder if you were to extend this. I just had an idea. Um, I wonder... just had a thought. I wonder if you can do this. If you... Maybe this is the Owen cubed solution. If you reverse this... Um, hold on. Rotate rotate. If you were to do something like so, like this, right? All right, suppose you did this, yeah? And then you just made all of this, um, all this, uh, hold on. I wonder if you did this. Oh. Did that incorrectly, huh? Um. Hold on. Hmm. I 
My noggin's a joggin' here. My noggin's a joggin'. Hold on, how do I copy this over? Oh, hmm. Uh, well, I'm doing it wrong anyway. It doesn't matter. This is not the interesting part. <laughs> Copying this exactly is not, not the part that's interesting. Um... So if I just if I just straight up copy this thing right from one side to the other, and then what I do is I say, okay, we're going to go ahead and fill this with negative ones, right? Suppose we did this again. This is me just kind of thinking out loud because I just saw, I just realized this might be the O n cube solution. And I didn't even realize it. Um, so what you could do is you can draw this this um, you can add this, right? And make all this negative one. Right? If you were to do that. I wonder if this gives you a solution. I'll describe my, my solution, initial solution, in a moment. I'm thinking this might be the... Now that we've, we've thought about this problem a bit and it's actually solved it. Um, okay. And we'll say all of this is, is also, you know, red. Meaning it's fake. Right? What I'm thinking is what if you were to say, okay, um, I want to go from, I want to go from, instead of making this circle, right, I want to go from here to here and then back to here. Uh, like so, right? From top left to bottom right, which, because this is mirrored, this ends up being here to here, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to take on squared um, um, time to memoize this whole thing, and what you're, what's going to happen is instead, and you're, I guess you can just recreate this whole thing, right? So this will cost you, you know, four four n squared space to, to build the whole thing. You build this whole picture, and then you say, okay, what we're going to do is up until this point, we are going to simply, actually no, every point, really, we're going to remove the mirror value. So, excuse me, we're going to have a, um, a point where we, we add that cherry, that particular cherry, right? And we say, okay, um, for our considerations, we are going to remove cherries um, that are in in the symmetric positions. So first, we'll find a not the optimal path. But we're going to find we want to find an optimal path to this bottom right, such that um, we're not just going to add, you know add cherries. What we're going to what we're going to have is a path of cherries. Um, and we're going to consider that we have removed um, some cherries. I guess each cherry that you visit, you can only visit it. Its symmetric cherry gets removed once you visited it, something like that. Um, I'm not sure if this actually makes the problem any easier. In my mind, it seemed like it might work, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was already 30 minutes in. I haven't fully explained the solution, but I'll, I'll come back to my, the correct solution in a minute. But I think um, I want to say that you can doing some kind of symmetric thing here might be good. Um, the thing is, though, when you add something on the path, you've got to make sure you remove it on the symmetric path. 
That's the key. Um, I'm not sure how to do that though. Um, uh, so if you recurse on these two spots and then recurse, 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 do a whole bunch of recursions. What you're returning, what you've got is a list of problem with that is I guess it's this uh, yeah I guess this doesn't really help as much as I thought it would the, the there was an algorithm I was thinking about it's like well you could just try every possible path down there and then each time you can remove the cherries and then run the the, the correct algorithm but the problem with that is um, is you don't you can't go through every possible path. Um, hmm. You could do maybe do something where you could suppose that when you when you add a certain element here, you remove all the elements to consider later. But I don't know if it's you can do that um, properly. I'm actually not sure now. I don't know. I don't know if this, this helps at all. I think something like this is useful, though. I don't know how, though. I, I don't know. Um, oh, I was wrong. Also, this is... Uh, it's supposed to go like this. Get that one that we missed. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Um, something like, yeah, you have to somehow, somehow this other symmetric part needs to know about what's happening over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess, um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a lot harder than that. I don't know. I could I couldn't figure it out, man. I, I keep getting stuck. I kept getting kept getting stuck. Something like this looks good, but the problem is that Oh, actually maybe it is uh, optimal. No. No, because you just get the same optimal path twice. <laughs> um No. <laughs> What if you cut the cherries in half? So you can only pick them up now. It's doesn't actually <laughs> doesn't actually help. Um, huh? No, <laughs> no. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so what I ended up coming up with, uh, which was correct, is um, you got three different. I was saying there's three different edge cases. Um, you know, you go in out of bounds, you go into the, uh, you know, something that's a thorn that's also going out of bounds, and, um, and then also, like, coming up with a solution that doesn't actually reach the bottom, but does give you an optimal number of cherries. So those are the three possible uh, sort of edge cases, base cases. Um, and then you just do a basic recursion over, over the, these, these four options, and then memoize it. And that's it. It's like really straightforward. Um, so I'll explain it here. So here we have sanity check, right? Just make sure the grid has something in it. Um, then we figure out how many rows, how many columns. We have a function for our bounds check. We said, you know, we have to be greater than or equal to zero, less than M rows, greater than or equal to zero columns, less than M columns. And then make sure we're not in the thorns, right? Then we know that we're you know, returning true on this means that we're, we're in bounds. And then we have a little little um, variable that keeps track of whether or not we reach the bottom right of the um, grid. Now we have our, our recursive function, just called an auxiliary function. We'll also, I'll use the LRU cache again. This will memoize in a, in a pretty succinct way. Um, this does a lot of the memoizing for you, so you don't have to, so it's, it's very clean as well. Or rather, it's clean in the sense of, um, you know, it's just one line to memoize. It's nice. So you can just write your function as you normally would. 
So we have this non-local to reach bottom right um, to ensure that we actually meet the, reach, the bottom, reach, reach the bottom right. And we do this anywhere we actually can reach it. If we can reach it any, at any, in, any, in any way, then this is true. And obviously, uh, after the function is called, if we can't reach it, then we just return zero. If we have returned correctly, right, what we re return is just the length of that. I think I mentioned it's a list. No, it's not a list. It's a set, a set of um, cherries that we pick up. Um, and what we do is we say, okay, we have some left point and right point, or rather, um, there's two points. So row one, column one, row two, column two, the two different points. Excuse me. We say, okay, um, if if we fail the balance check on either of these points, then we're going to return a negative val negative infinity to denote that we failed the check. Um, right, so that gives us our balance checks. And we only return a data structure um, if the path reaches the bottom right. If we don't reach the bottom right, then we'll end up, so this is another base case, we'll end up returning uh, negative infinity by default. So this is down here, negative infinity. Um, and you will not, you're right. So that's kind of tricky, that part, but that's the bit I said where you got to re reach the bottom right. Um, if you don't reach either of these points, then, uh, at the, at the end of your, your recursion, then you'll end up somehow at some, at some point you'll end up here. Um, most likely they'll just end up out of bounds. Um, so you've got to you've got to ultimately ultimately you do have to hit this point. And when I say it returns a data structure, it'll return a set. And if it if there's something in that in the grid at that point, then you'll return the set with just that cherry. Otherwise, it'll return an empty set. Um, yes, so you'll pick up the cherry, or you won't pick up the cherry depending. But you'll always return a set here, All, only if you reach that point. Um, otherwise, you're always going to return a negative infinity. So that's how I handle that case. And so you get a little helper function here that, so you've got this gather. It's going to gather up the different sets. There's four of them. Um, we're going to say for some, we're going to set Z to be recurse on these two points. Um, and if it's not negative infinity, then we're going to append a new... Now, here's the part where it adds linear overhead. I think I mentioned that. We recreate a new hash set based off of the set that's returned. So this is a set of the set, which is just... its Really, it's just a new set with the elements in that set. It's kind of interesting. It's not a set containing a set. It's a set uh, iterate of, of the things in the other set. So it, because it's set of an iterable, and set is an iterable, so it iterates over the set and creates a new set. So this actually creates a copy of the set. A little bit strange what's going on there, but I tested it to make sure, and it does does work that way. But yeah, this does a, this this just is like a basic check to make sure we didn't, um, you know, we're not on a dead. If we're on a dead branch, then we don't append it to the this gather array. If we are not on a dead branch, we have something legit, then we append it, and we do that for the four different direction, the four different possibilities. Um, and then we process those possibilities. So, so there are four different possibilities, right? We add, we go right, right. We add, add to the columns, right and down. We add to the column, add to the row, uh, down, right, all the, all the way around. Add to the row, add to the column, and then down, down, both add to both rows. And that's aux2, obviously, is our uh, now aux2, right? We said it's just another auxiliary function. To, this is just a helper function to make things a little cleaner. This would be pretty ugly. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it kind of looks ugly as it is, but it would be even way more ugly if we had these, this copied four times, which I had before, and I said, okay, I'm just going to write this function to make it a lot cleaner. Um, so then what you do is you say, okay, for each of these returned lists, these sets, we're going to say, okay, if we have something in our, our first point, and that first point's not in X, which is the new set, or is that a copied set, we're going to add it to that set. We do the same thing for the other point in the grid. Um, we do that for all of those sets, right? So we add the things that aren't added that need to be added. Um, obviously, don't add them if they're already in there. Then we sort the things, each of these lists, based on their lengths. And then we take the one with the largest length, if, if there's anything there. If they're all just dead branches, then obviously this, this is the part I said we default to negative infinity. So if all the branches died, uh, which is possible, um, 
then uh, then it's just a dead. This is also a dead branch. But if they didn't die, then there's something in his gather, and we're gonna take the one with the largest um, number of cherries, the largest length. And that's it. That's it. Really straightforward. Like really straightforward. Um, and obviously, right? We just if we didn't didn't reach the bottom, we return zero, and return at the end of it. So we just call it call our recursive function and return the, the length of the result. Um, and that's it. That's it. It's easy peasy. Um, let's, hopefully it still works. <laughs> Did we do it? Did we win? Success. So we're 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 very slow though. We're barely faster than than a, a f just a few few of them. <laughs> 95% of the solutions are faster, but we did it. So that, that's like the basic solution, the really, really basic one. Um, what I was thinking about here, I was thinking maybe that there, there, if there was a way to like connect these cherries with each other, such that when you pick up this cherry, you lose the ability to pick up this other cherry. Um, then, then you can do like a quadratic algorithm maybe um, I'm thinking like I don't know I guess you'd have to have like a list or something um, I don't know I don't actually know um, I don't know what the solution we could we could maybe look at the, the other solutions that are correct but I don't know I'm kind of hesitant to do that just because I don't I don't know I don't know what it is and I don't really care to know there's some clever thing that they did I guess somewhere somewhere in here but if you just kind of admit to yourself, like, you don't have to be that clever, then these problems are pretty easy um, just to solve. And then getting the absolute correct answer, you know, the best answer, the better answer, is more definitely more difficult, more challenging. Oftentimes, you got to employ something kind of clever. Um, yeah, I really don't know. I really don't know beyond beyond what we've got here. This is kind of kind of stuck there with the o, o n to the fifth, I think. And the reason I say O n to the fifth is because you're doing, this looks like O of n to the fourth, right? And then um, worst case, right? And n things for four, and there's four of them, size n. And then you're also doing these sets each time, which is O of n work. So you're doing O of n work on these O n to the fourth things, and so you end up with O n to the fifth. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it seemed like such a good idea when I was like, oh man, you can just copy this over to the other side. It's like, well, that doesn't help you as much as you think it does. Um, Hum, hum. It's interesting. So that how many different ways you can go down to the bottom right is two n choose n. There's it's right, 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 and le and down, 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 n times each, right. So you get 2n of these, and so you end up with 2n factorial over n factorial over n factorial, which is exactly 2n choose n. Um, right, because you can, you know, you could sort of label these 1 to n and then permute them n factorial ways, so you end up with 2n factorial, um, and then there's n factorial copies uh, in, in, in for both d and r. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can go down there. It's just how do you do how do you do O n squared O n cubed? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. I want to say something like you can just, but no, can't do that. No, no. If you just do maximum, um, if you just do a simple maximum from the bot top left to the bottom right, you'll end up in a situation where. Uh, where you just end up taking the maximum twice. 
end up just doing this twice. Mm. Huh. I want to say something to the effect of like you so you can you can get a maximum here. Like I want to I don't know, man. Uh, like ah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, the problem is when you get to this point, you don't actually know which path you're supposed to have taken here. Um, you don't know what path you're supposed to have taken here such that you can inform yourself as to what path should be taken here. It's almost like maybe... It's almost like maybe you should be doing a path from here while you're doing a path from here, which is kind of what I was doing. And in that way, it's it's only O of n squared time rather than O n to the fifth time. Um, and you're not getting the maximum path. What you're doing is you're considering like things removed by the other path. So while this one's going, it's removing stuff. And this one's going in tandem. Nah, it doesn't that's what I did. I don't know, man. I don't know. I can't I can't think of any other way to do this. I don't know. There's there's a better solutions out there. They 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 showed it, they wrote it, but we'll just say look, I couldn't I couldn't figure out the better solution. It's probably a clever way to do it. But I'll I'll start looking at other problems then. So yeah, that'll, that'll be it. Um, I realize this is kind of a lot of rambling and went, went kind of long. Um, but that's the solution. Um, hopefully it made sense. Hopefully people understood it. And yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to think about this one too much more, though. I'll move on. I'll move on. That's okay. I don't need to, I don't need to get too crazy with this. Um, apparently there's there's a, a way to do this that's it's pretty good. Apparently there's a way to do this that's pretty good and involves um, involves um, yeah O n cubed with O n squared space. I don't know what that that approach is though. So yeah. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon. Um, that'll be it for stream, I guess. Um, uh yeah, I'm actually not gonna turn on the stream after this. This is supposed to this is supposed to be more of a stream-ish video type of thing. I just wanted to like declare that I finally figured this one out, and I think I'll start looking at the other leak code problems. I've got a few problems to work with. I've got a um I gotta find a new job, and I've got to apply to a place that's remote, and I'm th not sure if I'm gonna be end up working at Google. That would've been nice, but I, I do ultimately need some some something remote so I can. Get, get out of New York, so to speak. I definitely need to do that. I need to go. Um, yeah, find something remote. There's a lot of companies that I like that I could do remote remote work for. Um, and kind of need to focus on that. Although I kind of want to spend some more time, while I'm waiting for Google to get back to me, I want to spend some time um, working on... Lead code problems. Actually, I kind of want to do a bunch of hard problems. See how many hard problems I can do that are similar to this, where they're like the solution's actually relatively easy. It's just you got to kind of realize that it's it's too hard to do in a clever way, but you can do it in sort of excuse me, a way that's not so clever and it's sort of good enough. You could probably bang out a whole bunch of problems like that. But if I, I probably should look at the solution for this one, though. I don't know if I'll do that now. Maybe maybe later. Should look at the solution to see, like, okay, well, how could you optimize this? You know, in other problems similar to it, you could probably apply the same technique. Um, there's probably something in there. It's, it's neat. So I sh probably should look at that. But um, I'll leave that for later. I think another time I'll come back to this. But yeah, I think I'll revisit other problems then. Start looking at other problems and try to apply the same kind of idea. A uh, sort of memoization type of thing. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Talk to you all soon. Have a... Uh, have a good day. Adios.